Okay, another problem computing a derivative. We've got a function g of x and we want to find its derivative g prime of x. So we're going to take the derivative of 4 times the cube root of x plus 2. Okay. Well, actually not a, not a bad one at all now that we've done that last one, which is pretty long. You know, the main thing we need to do here is write this as x to a power. It's the cube root of x, so that's x to the power one third. Okay. So really the function we have is 4 times x to the power one third plus 2. Okay. So this is the derivative of that sum of two functions. Next thing we use is the sum rule, which says if you're adding functions together and then taking the derivative, you can instead take the derivative of each one and then add it together. Okay. So that's the sum rule, and maybe just to save a little bit of time, I'll go ahead and use another rule here, the constant multiple rule. I want to get this power of x by itself. Constant multiple rule says I can factor that 4 out front because it's a constant. Okay. Now if you look at what we have, every, every derivative we have to compute fits into one of our rules. Okay, this is 4 times the derivative of x to a power. Well, we can use the power rule there. Okay. One third x to the power one third minus one, which is a negative two thirds. Okay. And the derivative of a constant, we have a rule for that as well, is zero. Okay. So that's the derivative of, of our function. Okay. Again, just a little bit too too little room to write this out. So we get four thirds times x to the power negative two thirds. Again, the book doesn't like negative exponents, so they'd probably write this as 4 over 3 times x to the 2 thirds power, which is the same as 4 over 3 times the cube root of x squared, okay, because we can write this back as a, a power and a root. That's probably what you would see in the back of the book on this, but really any of these three are fine. Preferably, we'd like the exponent made positive, but that's the final answer.